for the reference of your classmates who would not be able to attend our session. Edlyn, please lead a prayer. Sa ngalan ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Espiritu Santo. Panginoon, sana po bigyan niyo po kami ng sapat na talino upang maintindihan namin ng mabuti ang aming gagawing lesson ngay ngayon, ngayong araw. At sana po ay bigyan at sana po ay bigyan niyo po kami ng sapat na lakas na katawan at resistensya para malabanan ang anong sakit na aming upang malabanan at hindi magkaroon ng sakit na kumakalat ngayon tulad ng COVID-19. Yun, yun lamang po at maraming salamat sa lahat ng inyong biyayang binibigay araw-araw. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Edlyn. Uh, thank you for your prayer. Though I already have a a calf, kasi uh, siguro sa alikabok. Okay. Um, let me share my screen with you. Kung meron kayong, uh, I already sent to you the module. Yung share ko ay yung module natin in SEM5. So we'll be having the amortization Amortization muna tayo ngayong araw na to, no? So ano pa ang ibig sabihin ng amortization? Charlene, will you read the definition of amortization here? Ni Charlene Vargas. Ayan yung amortization. Will you please read? Amortization is a accounting technique used to periodically lower the book value of a loan or intangible asset over a set period of time. The term amortization can refer to two situations. First, amortization is used in the process of paying off debt through regular principal and interest payments over time. An amortization schedule is used to reduce the current balance on a loan. For example, a mortgage or a car loan through installment payment. Second, amortization can also refer to the spreading out of capital expenses expenses related to intangible assets over a specific duration, usually over the assets useful life for accounting and tax purposes. Uh, thank you, Charlene, for reading the definition of amortization. Pag sinabi natin amortization, technique yan ano, na ginagamit natin sa, sa, sa world, financial world kung saan uh, nahati siya into situations. The first one is uh, ginagamit natin siya sa pagbabayad ng utang. Yan, ano? Yung pangalawa naman, sometimes pagka gusto nating mag-flow ng, ng, ng car, even sa, di ba pag sinabi, naglabas ng motor, ano yung monthly amortization kapag naglabas ka ng motor? Yun yun. So meron tayong kinocompute na monthly amortization monthly na ihuhulog mo, yung monthly na nautang mo. So that's the monthly amortization that we are talking about. So yung pinaka-familiar nga, siguro nakarinig na kayo nung naglabas ng motor, sabi, no? naglabas ng motor, ano yung monthly amortization? Ibig sabihin ng monthly amortization, ano yung ihuhulog niya para makabayad siya doon sa hulugan niyang motor? O kaya naman doon sa mga sa mga bumbay, di ba? Maraming mga bumbay tayong friends, nagpapautang sila. Yung monthly amortization, ito yung buwan-buwan na inyong natin doon sa sa utang natin hanggang sa tayo ay makabaya doon sa sa ating inutang. At paano naman natin kinocompute ang uh, present value of, a, of an amortization? Ibig sabihin ng present value, ito pa yung natitira mong utang doon sa sa inutang mo. Okay? So, we have the formula. With amortization, the original amount of the loan or present value or obligation is known. Therefore, we use the present value formula for ordinary simple annuity. This is the formula. A is equal to PMT times the quantity of 1 minus the quantity of 1 plus I raised to negative N all over I. So na, na, nasa module nyo to, no? nasa module nyo yan. <clears throat> We're in A is the present value of an annuity for the amount of money you need now 
or O now. So yung A, that is the present value. And then what is BMT? BMT is the amount of the deposit or payment for each uh, payment period, I. Kinocompute natin si I, that is R divided by M. The interest rate for the compound period is calculated by defining the annual interest rate by the number of compound periods in uh, in a year. Like for example, kung 10% yon, so that's 10% 0.1 divided by the number of compound periods. Pag sinabi natin compound periods, like for example, semi-annually, semi-annually per year, uh, ibig sabihin 2 times per year. So that's 0 0.1 divided by 2. That is the value of I. O kung quarterly naman yan, 20% quarterly. So that's 0 0.2 divided by 4 to get the value of I. And then N is the number of deposits made for the duration of the annuity. And we can compute N by multiplying M and T. What is M? The number of compound periods in a year. And T is the length of the annuity in years. So, for example, um, compound periods natin ay monthly. So, that is equal to 12 times the length of the annuity in years times 2 years, for example. So, that's 12 times 2 is 24. That is now our N. Para makuha natin si N, we multiply M at saka T. Para makuha natin si I, we divide R and M. Okay. So take note of the formula. Ha? The formula is A is equal to PMT times the quantity of 1 minus the quantity of 1 plus I raised to negative N all over I. So let us try to solve uh, a problem using that formula. So suppose that we have here an example. Will you please read? Uh, Cyril Ann, will you please read Cyril Ann the problem? Example number one, I loan up seven quarterly payments of 8,300 pesos is to be made to pay up a loan at 10% compounded quarterly. Find the value of the loan and construct an amortization schedule. Thank you, Cyril. <clears throat> So the, here is our problem. The first step is to identify all our uh, loan variables na kailangan natin in solving our uh, problem. So kuhanin muna natin ano ba yung mga known variables natin dyan. So our A is what we are looking for. Ito yung hinahanap natin dyan. No? Because find the value of the loan. Sabi, find the value of the loan. So, A yung hinahanap natin. Ang nawawala ay yung value ni, ni A. And then, kuhanin natin yung mga uh, kailangan nating variables. P is equal to payment for each quarter. So, ano yung P? PMT. So, that's PMT. No? Payment uh, for each quarter is 8,300. Yan daw yung ipinabayad niya. No? 8,000. 300 quarterly ano seven quarterly payments ibig sabihin pitong quarter siyang magbabayad so ilang taon yon kung tutuusin pitong quarters so that is equivalent to how many years per year how many quarters do we have we have four quarters so that is equal to one year and uh, three quarters that is equal to 12 divided by 4 is 3, 9 months. 1 year and 9 months. And then, I is equal to, ito na nga sabi natin, I is equal to, how do we solve for I? R divided by M. So that is equal to 10% divided by M, which is uh, quarterly, kaya 4 siya. No? So that's 0.1 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.025. So again, para makuha natin si I, that is equal to uh, the percentage, which is 10% divided by uh, the number of compounding periods, which is equal to 4. So 0 0.10 divided by 4 is equal to 0 0.025. And then to solve for N, N is equal to 4. Sa nanggaling si uh, 4, that is quarterly. Okay, quarterly, and how many years? 
niyang babayaran 1.75 kasi 7 quarters yon ano 7 quarters so 7 quarters ilang years yon that is 1.75 years kasi sa isang taon we have 4 quarters e eh, pitong quarters ang pinag-uusapan natin dito so sa 7 quarters that is equivalent to 1.75 you multiply 1.75 by 4 because we have uh, four compounding periods in a time uh, in a year so that is equal to 7 4 times 1.75 is equal to 7 so we already have the values that we need to solve for a meron na tayong pmt meron na tayong i at meron na tayong n so we can now start solving we substitute the values that we have so PMT or P is equal to 8,300. Here it is times the quantity of 1 minus the quantity of 1 plus I. Our I is 0 0.025. Raised to negative N and our N is 7. So that's raised to negative 7 divided by 0 0.025. Then simplifying this further, so simplify, tapos na tayong mag-substitute. We simplify it further so you will have 8,300 times the quantity of 1 minus, in add lang to, 1 plus 0 0.025 is 1.025. Raised to negative 7 divided by 0 0.025. And then uh, simplifying it further, you will have, ito na siya. 1.025 raised to negative 7 using your uh, scientific calculator, please try. Uh, 1.025, 1.025, you raise it to negative 7. Please try to solve so we can check that is equal to 0 0.84126523 uh, and so on. Okay. So that's 2, 3. This is not 2, 3, 1. 0 0.84126523. Anong kasunod ni 2, 3? That's 5. Okay. 5 po. Alright. And then please do not uh, delete that answer into your calculator para hindi na kayo uh, nagra-round off. Ang pagra-round off natin palaging sa dulo. So wag nyo nang tanggalin yung entry na yan sa inyong uh, calculator, mag-subtract na kayo agad. So that's 1 minus the answer equals kasi ito yun, 1 minus the answer is equal to 0 0.1587347653 uh, and so on. So wag nyo nang tanggalin yun. Divide nyo na agad by 0 0.025 that is equivalent to 6.3493 906 and so on. And then you do not uh, erase that into your calculator. You multiply it by 8,300. So you will get the answer of 52,699.942. Sa dulo lang tayo magra-round off to the nearest thousands. When we say nearest thousands, uh, three decimal places. Bakit three decimal places? Because here in the mathematics of investment, medyo malalaki yung numbers na pinag-uusapan natin. Kaya kung ang gagamitin natin ay nearest tens or nearest hundreds lang, medyo magiging malaki kasi yung difference. So mas maganda, mas malaki o mas marami yung ginagamit natin decimal places, mas maganda kasi mas luminiet yung difference. Okay, hanggat maaari, sana hindi tayo nagra-round off doon sa process. Kasi kung magra-round off tayo doon sa process, magiging malaki yung diferensya ng sagot. So ito ngayon yung ating agreement. Walang magra-round off sa process ng uh, pagkocompute dito sa pagsosolve ng amortization. Magra-round off lang tayo to the nearest thousands kapag final answer na. Okay? So that is our amortization. The present value of the loan is 52,699.942. This is our 
answer. Letter A. The thing here is, alam nyo lang sana kung papaano isolve si I at saka papaano isolve si N para makuha nyo ng tama si A. So, hindi katulad dati na puro direct yung ating substitution. Ano? Doon sa uh, simple interest and compound interest, direct ang substitution natin sa mga variables. Here, medyo magsosolve ka muna bago po makuha yung value nung isa substitute mo doon sa formula. But the thing is, you have to to memorize the formula in solving for A for you to be able to solve for uh, the, pre, uh, the present value or the A. Okay, so, yan ngayon yung formula. Do you have any questions with regards to the use of the formula? May tanong? So, wala kayong tanong? Kung walang tanong, as I uh, told you earlier, you have to show your sweetest smile. You have to show your sweetest smile kung wala kayong tanong. Kasi kung hindi kayo naka-smile ng matamis, ibig sabihin meron kayong tanong. Uh, pakita nga ng sweet smile. Oh, wow naman. Oh, sweet na ba yan? Napaka-sweet. Grabe. Ayan, ayan. Ilalabas yung ngipin. Walang naglilista ng nakalabas ang ngipin. Ayan. Okay. Sweet smile. Always. Alright. So, kung wala kayong tanong dun sa formula, we move on to uh, paggawa ng table. Dito sa paggawa naman ng table, wala naman ding masyadong uh, computation. Gagamitin, pero gagamitin natin itong value ni A na nakuha natin, ano, which is 52,699.942. And please, Uh, sabihin ko na agad, ano, doon sa module na sinend ko sa inyo dati, meron lang konting diferensya. Nung sinend ko siya kahapon, meron lang naging konting diferensya doon sa value na nasa table. But we will be uh, correcting that this time. So we will be making an amortization schedule. Ito na ngayon yung uh, table. So papaano gumawa ng amortization table? The first one is to build a strong familiarization of the following variables which will be used in amortization schedule. So dapat alam daw ninyo o alam natin yung mga uh, variables na ito dahil gagamitin natin ito sa paggawa ng ating amortization schedule. So these are the definition of terms. OPBI, will you read? Angelica, what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of, of OPBI? Outstanding principal at beginning of interval. Thank you. How about BOB, Brian? Will you read? Reviews outstanding principal. Thank you. Daryl, will you read the PRP? Reviews repayment of... Previous repayment of principal. Thank you, Daryl. Um, Abigail de la Cruz, will you please read the meaning, the meaning of IDEI? Yan, monti ko nang marinig. Interest due at the end of interval, RII. Rate of interest per interval. Very sweet yung bosses ni Abigail ngayon, ano? Okay, how about the TPEI, Jolly Grace? Total payment of principal at the end of interval. How about the RPEI, Love Free? Repayment of principal at the end of interval. All right, thank you. So these are the terms that we have to Uh, bear in our mind pag gagawa tayo ng amortization schedule. Gagamitin natin mamaya yan. So the step two is to construct an amortization schedule table with uh, headings such as. So gagawa na tayo ng table. Ito ngayon yung headings natin. We'll be forming a table with five columns. So column one is for period. Column two is for the outstanding principal at the beginning of interval. 
column 3 is the IDEI, column 4 is the TPEI, and column 5 is for the RPEI. So, gagawa tayo ng table. Pag gumawa tayo ng table, this will be the, uh, the table, the amortization schedule table. Okay, so, here you go, the table. So, we have five columns here. The first column is for the period. Second is for the OPBI. The second one is the IDEI. Next one is the TPEI. And then it, the last one is the RPEI. Nagtatanong siguro kayo bakit naging 2.5% ito. Interest 2.5% due uh, at the end of interval. Bakit naging 2.5% po yun, sir? Naging 2.5% yun because from the original uh, problem that we have, the rate there is 10%. Kung mapapansin nyo, 10% yung rate natin from the original problem. Tapos, ilan yung compounding periods natin? We have four compounding periods because we are talking about uh, quarterly. Four yon. So, 10% divided by 4 is equal to 2.5%. Kaya siya naging 2.5. Okay? So, titignan ninyo doon sa original problem. Ayan, 10% yan compounded quarterly. 10% compounded quarterly. So, that's 10% divided by uh, 4. That's 2.5%. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan na natin ngayon dito ay per period, per quarter. Yung 10% na yun, yun yung rate niya per year. Since ang pinag-uusapan na natin dito ay ang kanyang interest per period. So, iti-divide natin yung 10% by the number of compounding period. Kaya siya naging 2.5%. Alright? Okay. And then we have the total payment at the end of the interval or TPEI for the payment. And then the last one is the RPEI. So, we already have the table. Yan yung table natin. Okay? Then step 3, determine the value of OPBI. and the yun. IDEI, TPEI, RPEI for the first period using the following formula. Siyempre, dito, uh, sa first period natin, hindi na tayo magsosolve dito ano? because the outstanding principal uh, at the beginning of the interval, yun nakuha na nating sagot kangina. Ano yun nakuha nating sagot kangina? Yun nakuha nating sagot kangina ay... 52... Yes, 52,699.942. So, yun na agad yung lalagay natin dito, no? 52,699.942. Paano naman po na-solve si uh, IDEI? Si IDEI, that is OPBI times 2.5%. Uh, so, i-multiply lang natin siya. So, that's 52,699.942. 942 times 2.5% in decimal. Gagawin natin decimal yung 2.5%. That is 0 0.025. That is equivalent to 1317.499. So, di round off na natin yan. And then the total payment at the end of the interval, TPI, yan yung uh, hinuhulog niya. Yung hinuhulog niya ay 8,300. So, actually, ito, yung table, na, yung column na to, for 8,300 lang yan hanggang sa uh, period 7. Okay? So, puro A3 lang yan. Pwede mo nang lagyan lahat yan ng A3. And then, si RPEI, paano natin nakukuha si RPEI? Si RPEI is equal to uh, TPEI minus IDEI. Ibig sabihin, 8,300 minus 1,317.499 is equal to RPEI, which is 6,982.501. <coughs> nasusundan? Kung nasusundan, ngingiti ng matamis. Leva, nasusundan? Kung paano nakuha yung apat na yan? Yes, po. Alright, alright. Okay, so once again, ulitin ko lang, no? ito yung 52,699.942, ito yung nakuha nating value kangina. And then ito, si 1317.499, i-multiply natin ito by 2.5%. 
So, nakuha natin ito. And then, 8,300, ito yung hinuhulog. This is from the uh, problem, given yan, A3. So, para makuha natin si RPE ay naman, sinubtract lang natin, A3, 8,300 minus the IDEI, that is equal to 6,982.501. Uh, Paano naman natin makukuha yung OPBI for the second period? So, para makuha natin yung OPBI for the second period, dito yon. Dito, paano natin makukuha yung sagot dyan? That is 52,699.942 minus. Magmaminus lang tayo ng RPEI which is 6982.501. So, subtract lang natin yon. Ito, yung 5, uh, 52, 6, 9, 9, 9, 4, 2, Minus 6982.501. So that is equal to uh, pag sinubtract natin yun, that is equal to 45,717.441. Did you get the same? Kung nakuha nyo ay the same, ngingiti lang ha. Ngingiti. Ngingiti kung nakukuha yung kamuka. Okay. Thank you. And then, the same process para makuha natin si IDEI, anong gagawin natin dito kay 4571741? We multiply it by 0.025. So, i-multiply lang natin yan by 0.025. That is equal to 1,142.931. One thousand one hundred forty-two times nine three six. So, ano ano lalagay natin dito sa table nato? This is still eight thousand three hundred na point zero zero para consistent. Puro nearest tau thousands. And then here to get the RBI, ano ng gawin natin? Eight thousand three hundred minus one point one thousand. 142.936. So that is equivalent to 7,157.064. So ito yun ngayon. Ano? And then, paano natin makukuha yung third period natin? So subtract lang natin yun. Yung ito, yung 7,157.064 from... 45,717. So, 45,717.441. So, magiging, that is equivalent to, what is your answer, princess? Nakuha mo ba? Nang sinubtract mo? What is the difference that you got? Sir, ang lumabas po sa akin is 52... 1,874.505 Wait lang po. Ano? Paano? Ang isusubtract natin ay 45,717 minus 4.4 minus 1,157.06 38,000 Okay, 38,560.377 Alright, 38,560.377 377. Thank you. And then, para makuha natin ito si IDI, anong gagawin ulit natin? We multiply it by 0.025. 0.025. That is equivalent to 964.009. Alright. And then, pag kinantinyo natin yan, So this is still eight thousand three hundred, okay? Point zero zero. And then, para makuha natin to si RPEI, ano ang gagawin natin yan? Eight thousand three hundred minus nine six four point zero zero nine. So you will have seven thousand three hundred thirty five point nine nine one. All right. So for the fourth period, 
Kaila, what would be our fourth period? Dito, para makuha natin yung fourth period. Sir, ano po? 31,224.377. Okay, 31,000. What's your answer? 31,224.377. Yes, yeah, subtract natin na 38,560.377 minus 7,335.991 is equal to... Ano na nga kailay sa iyo? 31,000 mm -hmm. It should be 0.386 31,224.386 Ingat pa subtract nyo nga 38,560.3 377 minus 7,335.991. Same po na answer niyo, sir. Ito, 3124.386. Right. Opo. Sige. So then we continue. We multiply it by, uh, paulit-ulit lang, ano? we multiply it by 0. Uh, 0.025. So the answer would be, uh, Ariel, what is the answer? When you multiply, Ariel Polycarpio. 780.609. Yung kasunod ni 9 is 6, kaya magiging 610. 610 na na. Alright. And then you're right here. You're right here. 8,300. Para di tayo nalilito, no? And then we subtract 8,300 minus uh, 780. Subtract nyo lang 8,300 minus 780.610 is equal to, uh, what is your answer, Liz Ann? What is the difference here? 7,519.39. Yeah, 390. Thank you. So that's 7,519.39. And then you repeat the process. Pag inulit natin ang inulit yung process na yan, ito yung kalalabasan ng ating table. So this is now our amortization table. Yeah. Kung mapapansin ninyo, pag inad mo yung RPEI, that is still equivalent to uh, starting value natin. Ayan ngayon yung ating magiging uh, value. Magiging amortization schedule. Now, for your task, I want you to have your own problem and make your own amortization schedule. Pero please, walang lalagpas ng 10 periods. No? Hanggang 10 periods lang ang maximum. Isip kayo ng sarili ninyong problem. Gawa ninyo ng computation. Gawa ninyo ng sariling table. Gawa nyo ng, uh, ng video na kayo mismo ang nag -e explain Okay? And then please submit it on or before next meeting.